An aging president faces his last hurrah in the uncharted wilds of the Amazon basin. Now that should be a movie. Hello, and thank you for watching today's episode of That Should Be a Movie. I'm C.W. Johnson Jr. Today's book I'd like to pitch as a movie is The River of Doubt, Theodore Roosevelt's Darkest Journey by Candace Millard from Broadway Books. It's 1913, and Theodore Roosevelt has just lost his bid for a third term in the White House. This was not due to any lack of effort on his part. He founded his own party, the Progressive Party, or Bull Moose Party, and he even survived an assassination attempt, after which he insisted on finishing his speech before going in for surgery. He still carries the board. Ouch. Bored and depressed, he retires to his Oyster Bay home. But then he has a chance for a bit of excitement, which he can't pass up. He is invited by some friends to go on an expedition to South America to capture birds for the Museum of Natural History. While there, he will visit with his son Kermit, no, not that Kermit, that Kermit, who has been assisting with railroad and telegraph construction through the jungle. Due to Kermit's connections, the opportunity arises to take part in exploring a river whose mouth is unknown, and TR jumps at the chance to map the River of Doubt. It was called the River of Doubt because no one knew its name, where it ended or where it began. Sharing joint command with Theodore is the equivalent of the Brazilian TR, Candido Mourinho de Silvia Rondon a mixed Indian from a jungle backwater. He lost both his parents and grandparents before he was five, and was raised by his uncle. Later, he applied himself to his studies at the military institution in Rio de Janeiro, proving that Indians were just as disciplined and as smart as other Brazilians. Later, he went on to become an advocate for indigenous people, founding the Indian Protection Bureau and advocating for national parks, just like Teddy. Critics said he loved the Indians more than the men under his command, since his motto was, Die if you have to, but never kill. Now, that guy deserves a biopic. The main conflict in a movie could be between Roosevelt and Ron Don. They debated about how to defend themselves from Indians. Ron Don would rather die, and his men too, than make the locals feel frightened. Roosevelt would just have well blasted away. Roosevelt believed that they should leave behind or execute a lazy rascalian who had murdered another member of the expedition. But Rondon believed that would be murder since Brazil did not have capital punishment. They debated between surviving and surveying, but ultimately they remained good friends who respected one another. Fun fact, Rondon loved dogs. One of the saddest parts of the story is when his pet dog saves his life by running ahead and is ambushed by the indigenous people instead of him. Despite seeing his dog die from two arrows, Rondon remains faithful to his value of human life and pacifist views towards the American Indians. Still later, he gets in an argument with Roosevelt after they leave the murderer Julio Lima behind, but take a day to look for Kermit's dog. The father-son relationship between T.R. and Kermit could also be a plot line. While they are growing up, Roosevelt stressed that his children live the strenuous life, taking them on hikes and horseback rides. He gave particular focus to Kermit, since he was brooding and attracted to the drink, traits similar to T.R.'s older brother, Elliot, who had died in disgrace in an asylum. Fearing that Kermit might kill himself too, T.R. made sure he engaged in physical diversions. On the expedition, these roles are reversed. T.R., who is blind in one eye, a fact he hides from the public, also has an old wound on his sin from a deadly streetcar accident he survived in 1902. While attempting to save a boat from the rapids, Roosevelt runs into the German-fested river and dashes his sin against a rock, his blood mixing with the muddy water. Although he quickly gets out of the water before piranhas could get him, infection has already set in. TR, who always dreamed of dying in battle, brought morphine in case suicide or self-sacrifice as he saw it became necessary. As he lays there shivering and slipping in and out of consciousness and delirium and quoting Taylor Coleridge's Cubal Khan, the men know he wishes not to be a burden on an expedition that can barely feed itself day after day. But Kermit refuses to honor his father's wishes and simply do as he is told. The father realizes his son has now become a man who won't leave him behind, and by dying, he will further endanger the other men, so he wills himself to live. These relationships could be explored through a series of thrilling incidents. There are tales of piranha attacks, the suspense of danger in the form of hostile tribes lurking nearby. There are encounters with rapids. Kermit and two of the camaradas go over a waterfall. With a good director of photography, it could be a beautiful film like The Lost City of Sea. 
There's an encounter with a deadly claw snake. One night, the starving explorers are so desperate to make a campsite so they can eat the monkey that Ron Don sought that day, they fail to notice the snake amidst the rust they are clearing. The pounding of their bare feet agitated the snake and went full speed towards Roosevelt. The 220-pound ex-president danced a desperate jig before bringing his foot down upon the snake's body. The snake buried his fangs in the Roosevelt's boot, the venom pouring down the leather that had saved his life by instance. With a computer-generated snake, this could be a harrowing scene, as the camera could be sought from over the shoulder and POVs of the snake, with vulnerable human feet coming down just inches away. It could also be a very atmospheric movie. There could be close-ups of the bugs and flies tormenting the men, as they push the canoes through the dark, sweltering, rotting jungle to avoid the rapids. Then, long, tilt-up shots, as they emerge from the jungle to find even more rapids. There could be close-ups of the termites eating the men's clothing the chopping of wood as they build new boats to replace the ones destroyed by the rapids. Added with the background of tensions of resentment towards Roosevelt's imperialist attitude among South Americans, and all men becoming equal as they struggle to survive. And don't worry girls, there's a lively debate between the Roosevelt's and other educated members of the expedition about literature and poetry, and Kermit's longing for his fiancée, Bella Willard, giving him the drive to survive. Because it is a true exciting adventure, and clue to the lives of two extraordinary men, Rhonda and Roosevelt, both of whom deserve biopics. I believe that The River of Doubt by Cance Millard should be a movie. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. And let me know in the comment section what book about Roosevelt or another true exciting adventure you think should be a movie. Have a great day and a better hair day than I'm having.